Before today's auction, Youngstowners tried to come up with money to save at least the 48-horse merry-go-round. A number of local residents watched out-of-state bidders lasso the hand-carved horses. A California physician let pass the $18,000 bid on the lead merry-go-round horse. Instead, he bid $20,000 for an Elvis stallion. The businessman, who has tried to keep local landmarks from the wrecking ball, didn't have the capital to match the $23,000 on one of the horses. Long before the large amusement parks of today, the country was full of smaller local parks that catered to their surrounding communities. For the steel-driven community of Youngstown, Ohio, Idora Park was that special place. Originally opened in 1899, the park quickly became a favorite local pastime. As the community's love for Idora Park grew, so did the park itself, adding more rides and attractions. We would go every summer to Idora Park. That was the highlight of our summer. There was just such an excitement in the air. From the minute you drove in the driveway, we couldn't hardly wait to get into the park and start riding. The centerpiece of the whole park was their beautiful carousel, made by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company in 1922. When I was a little kid, that was one of the first things you rode was the carousel. I always want to get on one of the horses that goes up and down, not a stationary horse. And God forbid you sat in one of those carriages. You didn't do that as a kid. You had to get on a horse. So I thought it would last forever. I didn't know that it was going to be in my rearview mirror, you know, forever. just after the noon hour at Idora Park. And within minutes, the smoke could be seen all over the valley. 50% of the amusement park was in flames. I'm sick. I don't know how it started yet. It was lunchtime, and we've got about 50 men working around here, and it just went that quick. Started back at somewhere in the Lost River ride, and I went in to answer a phone call, and I saw a little smoke, and I called the fire department, and it's gone. We thought that it might have jumped over to the ballroom on the one end and the carousel on the other end, so they pretty much had to make a choice on which side of the fire they were going to fight. They were trying to keep the carousel protected, you know, so they kept putting water on it. They just hosed it down. You know, that was a godsend, the fact that they did protect it and keep it from burning. As soon as it happened, I had a sister who called me up, and she said I door park burned and it's probably not going to open up again. But it didn't hit me until I walked through it. And then it was, it was obvious. We can't even go there and reminisce. We can't even go and walk through the park, you know, because it's all gone. It's just the fire had taken it. And we were just devastated. It was a hard day. Friends, Youngstowners, and all concerned, if you have tears, prepare to shed them now. The auctioneer has moved on to the property of Idora Park, and the gavel will fall this weekend on millions of dreams. Dave Norton and the 12 who are working for him have to list and tag everything in the park so the sale will go off smoothly. They started auctioning off, you know, by piecemeal. The horses on the outside were averaging about $11,000 a piece, so they went for pretty good money. One of the armored horses, when they auctioned them off separately, one of them went for $23,500 for one horse. I thought, it's just gone. We're not going to have any piece of any of it, especially the auctioning of pieces of the carousel, you know, and where's it going to go? Who's going to buy it? Where, where's it going to end up? And is it going to be forgotten that it was in Youngstown, Ohio, that it was ours? Dumbo, it's a neighborhood. It stands for down under 
Manhattan Bridge overpass. I was like, wow, what a great neighborhood. All these old industrial, big concrete buildings. It was like a magical place, and it was vacant. So somebody should buy the whole neighborhood. So I ended up buying 2 million square feet for $6 a foot. Bought the whole neighborhood. <laughs> and everybody thought I was a dumb and dumbo for about 20 years. Then I became a fucking genius. <laughs> In his plans to revitalize Dumbo, David decides that an antique carousel should be placed in the park overlooking Lower Manhattan. His wife, Jane, heads up the nationwide search for the perfect carousel. Jane, Jane had looked at carousels for a couple of years. Being an artist and loving carousels, she really knew the difference. And she, she looked at carousels around the country. And when this one came up for auction, she said to me, this is a real deal. You know, we should see this one, and if we can, we should buy it. When the bidding was done on the pieces, uh, everybody took a deep breath, and the auctioneer started for a price for the whole machine, $385,000. The auctioneer had trouble getting the first bid, and I thought, well, I'll make the first bid, and, and we'll see where it goes. You know? It will take a bid. Start the sale together as a unit. And now it's just a question of yes or no. We'll give a half a million. He kept talking, talking. No bid. We bought it. So everybody, everybody came and congratulated us. We we're like rock stars. Wanting to head up the restoration herself, Jane begins chipping away layers of park paint with an X-Acto knife, slowly returning the carousel to its original glory. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, what is all this stuff? You know, you definitely, I think even they didn't grasp, but certainly at 11, I didn't grasp all the auxiliary non-horse, you know, apparatchik of the carousel. You know, I'm sure at some juncture she came home and like told me in words like, oh, I'm peeling back the paint and there's all this detail that was lost. You know, and then you'd participate in the process or see areas where she uncovered like all this amazing stuff. And you know, then it becomes obviously like all things, you know, more personal and makes more sense. And you're just like, wow. And, and I think, you know, then you kind of get more involved in the process and more appreciative of, of, of what she's doing and the whole thing. I think she brought me right down to the space. And Jane was so amazing about celebrating all of it that when she brought you in, you know, you could tell that Jane just loved every single detail of what was happening on the carousel. She was amazingly careful about every little line, like, David would come in and say, Jane, that's going to be 12 feet high. No one's going to see whether there's a little wobble in the line. But Jane was not. <laughs> she wanted it to, you know, if anybody were to take it all apart and look at it, every piece was perfect. Like, and, and we love that. She sort of hired the right people who were really into the perfection of the craftsmanship. It's definitely progress oriented. I've been painting these small blocks. There were these small decorative blocks that are on these upper panels that slot in and then these curvature pieces. So moving from that to getting to paint on a horse, detail on a saddle was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And then varnishing and finding the right varnish. I mean, and we made our own varnish. I don't know many people who make their own varnish. That spoke of volumes to me in terms of how much she cared for this project. Jane had been working on the carousel for a number of years, and mainly the carousel, I mean the carousel animals. So by the time they were starting to really think about putting the mechanism together with the facades and the figures, and that's when I got involved. All the mechanics were redone with all the individual cranks and jumper bearings and all the moving components of the carousel were all updated with factory-style uh, replacement parts. 
when we were set up enough to really start putting the animals onto it was the pony parade. And they brought the horses from Jane's studio down to the Water Street facility. It was quite the sight. <laughs> Everybody just started pushing. There was 48 animals, so it took a lot of people to push them from the studio and up into the carousel pavilion. Pretty much the whole time she was working on it, we didn't have a deal with the city and the state to really have a home for it. Putting the thing together again just made it into something totally different, right? It, it's such a thing where the whole is so much bigger than the sum of the parts. And I think it was important for everyone to see it, and we wanted to see how it ran and all the things. But at that juncture, I knew that she was not the constraint, right? I knew she had done an outstanding job. I knew the finish line was in sight. And it was really David and my responsibility to make sure that the carousel wasn't homeless. Once they're finally able to secure a deal with the city to put the carousel in Brooklyn Bridge Park, preparation of the site begins. The iconic glass box building is erected and the carousel is reassembled within, on display for all of New York to marvel at. After years of anticipation, the carousel opens to the public on September 16th, 2011. I remember just being super proud, super proud of my mom and my dad. It was nice to see it so celebrated. But no, it was this intensely proud moment where you A, felt like my mom kind of got her due, but you also felt like the world finally saw what we had seen for so long. And Jane's vision in the carousel has really remade that whole area. It brought new people in to see that part of Brooklyn. It got people that live there to have greater pride in their neighborhoods and how they can get involved. And whether you're in Manhattan looking across the river or you're in Brooklyn really enjoying it, the carousel is something that is special and known around the world. It's interesting, I, I kind of think about the carousel as this like, truly this place where you like watch magic. All you have to do is like watch one ride and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like this switch that happens to anybody. Like, like the carousel spins and for three minutes and 40 seconds or whatever it is, everybody's really happy. I can't think of any other place where you can go and watch everyone be really happy for three minutes. Like, it's just magic. Most of the really beautiful things we can't touch and certainly can't ride. But it is a different human experience when we can do it as opposed to just watch it. And the carousel's job is to bring joy to people. That's why it was created. And um, it'll just continue to do more of that. I, I could never say thank you to her enough for saving our carousel. She saved our, our Idora. She saved that. The only thing left. This thing has really turned into a, a beautiful attraction, giving a lot of people a lot of happiness to uh, visit there and, and see the, the ride that they rode at Idora sitting there on the river. I would tell her that I'm proud of what she did and to thank her for what she did. Uh, she saved. Uh, uh, something really important to this, the people of this area. I think she knows, but I think I would like to tell her again how much she was appreciated in the community, that she was just sort of this incredible light. Yeah, I think it's a gift that, I mean, years and years are yet to come where I think New York's going to be like, man, Jane Walentis, thank you. <laughs> I couldn't be more happy to be, have been involved in the Carousel Project. Uh, you know, I couldn't be happier or more thankful for, for David and Jane. I think about Jane's smile kind of like living on with all of the visitors. Like I talk about that magic and like that her magic is because she did this and then that magic kind of transcends into everyone that gets to enjoy it. Every once in a while, I'll go for a walk through the park if I'm thinking of her and just do a lap around the carousel. And, and yeah, it, it's rare that your work touches so many future generations of people, and it's, it's, it's incredible. It was our life's work together. And fortunately, although she protested, I said, Jane, this is Jane's carousel. We're going to call it Jane's carousel. There'd be no, no carousel without you. 
and she, she liked it in the end. Um, so forever it will be Jane's carousel. <laughs>